As he prepared for the fourth Fide Candidates Tournament, Paul Kears went on a fishing trip with Vilatas Mykonas, the veteran Estonian master. While they were relaxing they talked chess and discovered a dangerous sacrificial line in the Nadorf Sicilian. To celebrate our success, Mykonas recalled, they decided Kears should save the idea for a game with Fisher, who was becoming the world's most devoted Nadorfile. As luck would have it, Fisher was due for black against Kears in the first round when the candidates began in September 1959. The timing was perfect and the fish went for the bait Mykonas wrote. E2 E4 C7 C5 Knight G1 F3 D7 D6 D2 D4 C5 takes on D4 Knight F3 captures D4 Knight G8 F6 Knight B1 C3 A7 A6 Bishop C1 G5 E7 E6 F2 F4 Bishop F8 E7 Queen D1 F3 Queen D8 C7 Needing a draw against Gligorik in the final round at Port Oroz to qualify for this candidate's tournament, Fischer made the stunning choice of the Argentine variation. H7 H6 Bishop G5 H4 G7 G5 F4 captures G5 Knight F6 D7 Despite the complications of Knight d4 takes on e6 Knight d4 captures e6 f7 takes on e6 Queen f3 h5 King e8 f8 Bishop f1 b5 After Bishop f1 b5 After Rook h8 h7. He had the better of it when a draw was agreed at move 32. Queen d8 c7. Castling queen side. Knight b8 d7. Bishop f1 e2. b7 b5. Bishop g5 takes on f6. Knight d7 captures f6. e4 e5. Bishop c8 b7. e5 takes on f6. e5 captures f6. The soul of the fishing trip variation. White is worse after. Queen f3 g3. d6 captures e5. F4 captures E5. Knight F6 D7. Queen G3 captures G7. Queen C7 captures E5. Queen C7 captures E5. Bishop E2 F3. Castling King side. E5 takes on F6. Bishop B7 captures F3. Bishop e2 captures f3. Bishop e7 captures f6. Black must navigate past pitfalls such as Rook a8 c8. f6 captures e7. Bishop e2 captures f3. e5 captures f6. Bishop b7 captures f3. Bishop e2 captures f3. Bishop e7 captures f6. Bishop f3 captures a8. Bishop f3 takes on a8. Black must navigate past pitfalls such as. Rook a8 c8. f6 captures e7. Queen c7 captures e7. Knight d4 f5. e6 takes on f5. Rook h1 e1. Rook h1 e1. b5 b4. Knight c3 d5. e6 captures d5. Rook h1 e1. Rook c8 c4. 
with muddy complications. Knight c3 d5 Knight d4 f5 Bishop e7 captures f6 Bishop f3 takes on a8 d6 d5 Bishop f3 captures a8 Now an attractive idea is Queen c7 c4 Knight c3 e4 Queen c4 captures a2 Although white should have the better chances after. Knight e4 captures f6. g7 captures f6. c2 c3. d6 d5. Black is ready to coordinate his pikes. Bishop a8 c6. King e8 f8. Knight c3 e2. King f8 e7. And, rook c8 should win. Bishop a8 captures d5. Imagine being Fisher, playing the first game of your first candidate's tournament and realizing you are still in the prepared analysis of one of the greatest attackers in chess history. Bishop f6 captures d4. Rook a8 c8. Now an attractive idea is. Queen c7 c4. Knight c3 e4. Queen c4 captures a2. Although white should have the better chances after. Knight e4 captures f6. G7 captures f6. C2 C3 D6 D5 Bishop A8 captures D5 Imagine being Fisher, playing the first game of your first candidate's tournament and realizing you are still in the prepared analysis of one of the greatest attackers in chess history. Bishop F6 captures D4 Rook d1 captures d4. e6 captures d5. Knight c3 takes on d5. Queen c7 c5. Rook h1 e1. King e8 f8. c2 c3. h7 h5 f4 f5 rook h8 h6 f5 f6 g7 captures f6 knight d5 f4 h5 h4 rook d4 d8 king f8 g7 rook e1 e8 queen c5 g1 king c1 d2 queen g1 f2 knight f4 e2 Rook h6 g6 g2 g3 f6 f5 And now it has f6 Black delays, pawn takes g3 because in some cases, h3 And, queen takes h2 will be the key to winning The immediate 28 h3 loses the pawn to rook checks Rook e8 g8 King g7 f6 Rook g8 captures g6 F7 takes on G6. G3 captures H4. Queen F2 takes on H2. Rook D8 D4. Queen H2 H1. King D2 C2. King F6 E5. A2 A4. Queen H1 F1. Knight E2 C1. Queen F1 G2. King C2 B3. B5 captures A4. King b3 a3. Queen g2 c2. Knight c1 d3. King e5 f6. Knight d3 c5. Queen c2 c1. Even if black wins the knight for his f pawn, white will draw if he can capture both queenside pawns and then post his rook on a protected fourth rank square such as d4. That's a fortress because black cannot promote his g pawn. 
his king is barred from taking part in mating threats, and there are no other winning plans. Rook d4 captures a4. Queen c1 e3. Knight c5 captures a6. Also lost is. Rook a4 captures a6. King f6 g7. Knight c5 e6. King g7 h6. Knight e6 d4. King h6 h5. But the real question is whether black can win after. Rook a4 d4. Fisher gave an elaborate line that began with f5 f4. Knight c5 d3. f4 f3. King a3 b3. King f6 g7. King b3 a3. Queen e3 e2. King a3 b3. Queen e2 d1. King b3 c4. a6 a5. King c4 b5. A5 A4 King B5 A5 Queen D1 B3 King A5 A6 A4 A3 After which his rook loses its pawn support B2 captures A3 Queen B3 captures A3 And Qx C3 and defeat is a matter of time Knight c5 takes on a6. f5 f4. Rook a4 d4. King f6 f5. Knight a6 b4. Queen e3 e7. King a3 b3. Queen e7 takes on h4. Knight b4 d3. g6 g5. c3 c4. Queen h4 g3. c4 c5. f4 f3. King b3 c4 f3 f2 Knight d3 takes on f2 Queen g3 captures f2 c5 c6 Queen f2 captures b2 King c4 c5 Queen b2 c3 King c5 d5 g5 g4 Rook d4 c4 Queen c3 e5 Now imagine your fisher playing the first game of your first candidates tournament and realizing you've just made it one of the greatest attackers in chess history in the center of the board. Queen c3 e5. Now imagine your fisher, playing the first game of your first candidates tournament and realizing you've just made it one of the greatest attackers in chess history in the center of the board. 